Hey fish people. Sorry about the little delay after Rob's. I had to use the little boy's room. We are looking at my Sulawesi Cardinal tank. Which, this could be the first news of the stream. Uh, this tank no longer contains my Blue Ghost NPR shrimps. Welcome, your first that the Silhouette Cardinal tank no longer contains my Blue Ghost Silhouettes because they now fish traffic. What's up? They now have their own tank up here, which it breaks my heart to have to waste money on a temperature controller for a 10 gallon tank, but they are Blue Ghost Silhouettes. Um, they've dropped in price to probably about fifty dollars now, but when I paid when I bought them, they were a hundred each. So I only bought two, and that was the friend price, by the way. Um, but there's five of them in here now: the two original that I bought, and three um, that they bred and had three babies that were blue. They bred. There's one. They bred with my normal cardinals in my normal cardinal tank. And out of the the babies came these guys. Um, so I'm. It's seeming like the uh, cardinals and the Sulawesi almost breed like Taiwan bees, where it seems like the blues and the cardinals when they breed together, they'll either be a cardinal or a blue. Um, but I could be wrong. It's only the first generation, we'll see. But I already separated them out, so any of the blues, if the Cardinals keep throwing blues down here, anything they throw will get moved into the blue tank here. And I put it on the end here because I could pretty much see three sides of it now, which is awesome. And I normally can see all these guys from this angle, but they're hiding. There's one over there. Um, there's always one inside this Choya wood hanging out. Of course... They make me a liar right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm super happy. There's the heater I got going attached to the Inkbird temperature controller. So I'm super happy about this tank. Uh, but this is this is the big news that I kind of mentioned. Oh, am I zoomed in? I totally am. Let me walk around. Boom, boom, boom. As you can see, there's tons of changes. Ew. Uh, look at that tank. We'll get to that. There's tons of... Uh, Tons of changes going on in the shrimp room. So we'll start we'll start at the top over here. So this rack I was gonna get rid of. Um, if you remember this top row had uh, for those of you who don't watch, I guess I'll show you. But walking around out of the fisher. So we have a 10 gallon right here that used to be my original Sulawesi Cardinal tank. Um, I pulled it out. It's in retirement for the moment until I can clean it out and uh, we'll get a reset. I also have another 20 tall over there that I need to get going, but we'll see. We'll get to them eventually, but right now I don't need them, so they're in retirement for the moment. Um, but this rack I originally wanted to get rid of, but um, as you can see, it's very cramped in here and my stuff is everywhere and I'm getting sick of it. My wife's getting sick of stuff being everywhere, so I needed a place for for actual shelves um, so this rack instead of getting rid of it because I didn't trust all the weight of all the tanks on there now I'm just gonna keep these two tanks up there and use those bottom shelves as my storage so that'll help me out in case you're wondering why my daughter was here helping me set up this tank um, she's super into it super happy but anyway let's get to the update so my white ghost bees have been getting bigger they've been getting buried but then the berry, the babies never don't seem to survive. So, after a couple months of that, I thought it's time for a tank reset. So they got this top row now. They're up here. Um, and my white ghost bees are very, they seem to be very happy up here. So hopefully they'll start breeding for me again soon. And we'll get some nice ones, or some nice babies. And they'll actually survive in this tank. There we go. Finally a nice shot. Trying to get a nice shot of these guys. But these guys came from um, 
Jeff Lidberg, but originally from Eric Lucas's colony. How big is my RO? Hold on. Oh, uh, someone jumped. Let me let me scroll through the comments here. First, I saw RO, and before I backed up, but my RO is bulk resupply, five stage water saver plus. 150 gallons per day. Um, I need to change the sediment filter, which means I probably need to change the carbon filters too. But we can see what we're coming in at. We're coming in at one still. We're going out at one. So my DI is pretty much shot, that means two. But one's still good. But basically, I need to replace my DI. And uh, you can see the condensation from the cold water coming in. Um, I'm going to have to turn the pond lines on. I forgot to turn that on. Hopefully I can do that with the app running. Let's scroll back through the comments. Story Miss, what's going on? Um, how big is your RO filter? I just showed that. No, NPR said no more shrimp towers. That's the big news that I was going to break. And you kind of broke the big news for me. So, it's not... My experiment is, I've, I've ended the experiment. So, instead, yes, I love my shrimp towers. And if you guys don't know what he's talking about, shrimp towers, my soil towers. So that's what I used to keep my soil in. And I've decided the experiment is over and I'm not using the towers. Not that they don't work, and in theory they'd be great. Um... I just think they took up too much real estate. They made the tanks look ugly. And uh, honestly, it's still going to just, when I change them out, it'd still disturb it. And I'd still have to deal with the paint. It'd still be a pain in the butt to change. Not as much of a change as redoing the whole tank. But honestly, I think I'd just rather re deal with a tank where I can see my shrimp. All the towers ain't taking up all the real estate. And um, I can see what's going on. Easy to get to the shrimp. I like the nice, clear look to it where I can see everything in the tank. So that's basically why. I think it's a good idea in theory, but in practice, you know, if the soil's going to last a year and a half, I'd rather look at, the, at a nice tank for a year and a half and then have maybe a couple days of a pain in the butt when I'm resetting a tank versus looking at the soil towers every day for a year and a half and then it making it easy to change so it's it's a personal preference i experimented i think they're a good idea if you want to deal with it they do take up a lot of real estate so i just decided against it at this point and i'm going to go with that so yep no shrimp towers in the new tank this tank's getting set up for my pintos so I recently picked up some, um, a little bit of galaxy going on, but some mostly just the fish, fish bones, red fish bones, and with kind of a, a couple stars. Not really. Can't really call them galaxy, I guess. I thought they were galaxy at first, but Facebook disagreed with me when I posted them. So now I'm just calling them fish bones. But and my uh, a lot of my. Like, there's a, a zebra, black zebra pinto that's buried. A couple of these are all buried up. There's another fish bone, black fish bone that's buried up. So these guys are going into this tank when it's ready. And I have a bunch of, this is my one stripe King Kong and black King Kong tank. There's only one stripes and black in extremes in here. Uh, but there's a couple buried going on in this tank too, and I want to get, I'm, as I said, I'm getting rid of the towers so I can see. So this tank, this, I decided, since the, I have a lot of pintos that are buried. Oh, that was a loud noise. I'm sorry. I'll mute my phone right now so that doesn't happen anymore. Muted. Okay. Um, but basically, I decided that these pintos are moving over here, since these three tanks are. They have the soil in the back, but they're still not towers. So I could use these as my working tanks. So my pintos are going over here. 
this will be my working tank and then my first move is to get these shrimp that are buried and actually all the shrimp in this tank not just the buried ones but all the ones that are in this tank up here and then I could redo this tank without the towers and then my um, red my tank of red King Kong one stripe um, and extremes these are only that one's so dark it almost looks black at this angle but I promise it's not if I move the light you'll see it's red but this is a tank of just red one stripe and extreme King Kongs um, these guys are gonna move over to this tank once it's redone and so on and so forth and then probably after that I'll take my pure black line and reset their tank without it my red tigers and reset their tank without it and basically get all three of these which actually these three tanks might I'm thinking might actually be my least priority because I can see through both sides of these tanks because that's in the middle so a lot of these tanks I can just I can see a lot so these might be my least priority since I can see around them maybe these things I will leave the towers in because my visibility is still pretty good even with the towers in these tanks focus but so there's the change there we have the white ghost beast going there the pintos are going to go there we're going to keep going tank by tank here people so wow 11 minutes in and we only did the first two tanks can't we got to speed this up a bit or this is going to be all night so this is my main colony of pure red line it's getting a little slim if for those of you who are members of the USA Freshwater Shrimp and Plants uh, group and the sister auction group, I have been having auctions, auctioning off these bad boys. So this tank's a little scarce. And also this tank, you can see it has my soil towers. I have decided that the taller tanks... I'm going to leave the towers because I like it in the taller tanks. They don't take up too much real estate. You barely even notice they're there. But it's only because it's tall enough where I could put them all on one side rather than having to stagger them throughout the tank. Um, so this tank I'm actually probably going to stick with the towers and let these PRL do their thing until they get back up. Um, MPR, the ponds, we'll get to them. I'll show you in a second. So, down here, sorry about flip camera, flip camera. You don't want to see my mug. Okay, so I don't know where I lost you, but we're done with the PRL at this point. Um, the, this tank is not packed because I'll show you, I have a couple more. As MPR mentioned, I have a pond, and I also have a 10 gallon of PRL going on. And this tank was also full of PRL, but um, they've been redistributed into the pond. Uh, but down here underneath, this tank was my guppy tank. Sold all my guppies. They're gone. And now I have what, in my opinion, and from where my opinion is based on the Facebook replies and posts and boasts and everything, I have some yellow neo yellow neo golden backs 30 of them and these come from D's aquatics uh, Bernie Bernie guest on Facebook and this is um, known as one of the most true breeding lines of yellow neos around at least that's the word on the street so I waited until he had enough available. I basically waited for this line in particular because I know they breed pretty fairly true. So this tank is now my yellow Neo tank uh, from a very, very nice line. So very happy with that. Super happy about my yellows. I have my shadows going on up here. My bruiser tank with my blue bolts and my shadow pandas. 
Really nothing new going on there. Pinto tank we've already seen. I have my fish bones up here in the breeder box. So they're, they're in their breeder box waiting till they breed. My yellow King Kong are in here. We got a couple of buried females in here. Can we see them? They like to hide out over here sometimes. No, nope. they're all hiding somewhere. Um, this is the other pure red line tank. There's tons of them in here. Tons of babies. There's babies everywhere you look, pretty much. Um, but this tank needs. I'm waiting till the babies get a little bit bigger before I get the towers out of that tank as well. My blue bee paracaridina. Pretty much every female is buried. They are a smaller shrimp species though, even smaller than the normal ones. So, there's one swimming right there. But they like to hide out in the choya wood. What, are you doing the dance of the male or are you molting? What is this one doing? I think they're doing the dance of the males maybe. We'll see. But yeah, there was a bunch of buried in the blue bees. There's another one right there. But it's a male again. There's another male. Yeah, they're doing the dance of the males. So if one of the females must have just molted, if you don't know what I mean by the dance of the males. And the males are all out swimming around trying to find her. So the other thing about the pool sand, look at that. There's two of them right there. They blend in so well. That's the other problem with the pool sand. It's very light, so a lot of the shrimp will blend in right with it. So... I'm also going to switch to try to get a lot of black going on. Uh, let's check out some comments. What are good shrimp to pair with Black King Kong? Um, pretty much any Taiwan bee. Taiwan bees you can put together and they'll be straight Taiwan bee. Did you miss the Cardinals? No, I'll come over here. I haven't really shown, I've shown the tank, but I haven't shown a close up of them yet. So I guess we'll do that next. A lot of these are buried up, so we'll probably see a bunch of buried. So, but they, the cardinals like to hang out under the rocks in the shadows. And obviously, you can see how much algae is in the glass because I don't like to clean the glass. So, but hopefully, we'll get to see some babies because there are a ton of babies in here. But they're the the silhouettes are very good hard hiders, and they prefer to stay in the dark. But these are gorgeous, gorgeous shrimp. As you can see, they're pretty. Very pretty. And they're pretty much everywhere. Starting to have a bunch of these, even though you've just got to look under the rocks. But they're pretty much under every rock all over. Let me try to zoom out here. Zoom out. Maybe there's one in the light so you can actually see the color. What they look like in the light. Beautiful. Uh, that's a bad angle. Alright, so zoom out. Zoom out. And then we'll look for some babies. There's one, not a baby, but there's some, a cardinal out, out and about. This YouTube app is so bad with the focus. And the zoom. Zoom out, please. Zoom out, please. Sorry about the zoom, it's not. There we go. Very pretty. Where are some babies? There's usually a lot of babies. They're inside the choya wood though. And a lot of these, I haven't seen any buried females right now. 
and just like two days ago there was like ten. So there should be lots of babies around. We just don't know where they are right now, but we'll move on. Turning around up here, I separated out my uh, German Pintos. So I have my German red and black Pintos up here. The Danny's Aquariums, thanks for showing up. I know you're just uh, here killing time until Aquarium Co-op stream soon, but I appreciate you coming, thank you. But yep, here I have my German Pintos, also known as Cloud Pintos or Spot Pintos. Um, but they're awesome. Over here I have my Bloody Mary tank that I've been, uh, these are Bloody Marys that I pulled from my Sapphire Shrimp. So, we're going to see what happens with that. So, my Sapphire Shrimp is here, my main Black Diamond, Blue Diamond colony of Sapphire Shrimps. Um, they are here. Here's my normal colony of Bloody Marys. These I bought from So Shrimp. Um, they're beautiful. And I don't mix my... And here are my culls. I have my brown culls from my... Uh, well, my brown culls from my sapphire shrimp. And up here are my blue culls from my sapphire shrimp. And all the Bloody Marys between those through these, this tank, this tank, and this tank go into this tank. Um, so I'll get a bunch of Bloody Marys and they'll go in there. Hey, what's up? Um, Surgeon Tanks is here. Uh, DET Aquarium. Daryl, what's up? I hope you're doing well as well. Good as well. Uh, so we're moving on. So, oh, we got to show you these. Up here we have some pretty nice cherries I got in. And by pretty nice, I mean fantastic. But there's some gorgeous cherries right in this tank. 30 of them. They all have red legs. And they're all fully colored and beautiful. And some of them actually lost their color. Um, but I also have a gorgeous strain of cherries over here too. So I have a couple amazing lines of cherry. And these are on white sand, mind you. So this is the worst they're possibly going to look. If these were on black, they'd be a me like look even better than they already look. But yeah, I have a couple different lines of amazing cherries. And then even my cull tank of cherry. Oh man, look at gorgeous, gorgeous cherries. But I got tons of tanks. And then down here, this is my... This is my cherry cull tank. Look at some of these. Cherry culls. So these are the ones that didn't make the cut. I mean, yeah, obviously some there's some males that don't have much color. But then you look at some of the females that didn't make the cut. And you'll see the grades of my cherries that I'm looking at. Like, even that one, just because the legs aren't perfectly red. They didn't make the cut in the other tanks. So, look at that. These guys are still basically painted fires. They just don't have perfectly red legs. In here, we have my orange eye red ghosts. And they are a little small. And apparently they are being shy right now. But as you see, no tower. So I just rebuilt this tank. Um, so they're getting used to it. And they are little, so they're all in the Choya wood. But we'll go back to some tanks that we skipped over here. So, we said we have my German Spot Pinto, my Bloody Marys that were thrown by my Sapphire Shrimp. Uh, the Red Rillies, not new to see here. So I have my Red Rilly tank. And then my blue sapphire call tank, my brown sapphire call tank. These are the big news. Extremely high grade Nano Seas from Selene. I won these in an auction for two hundred dollars a trio of the breeding pair, a breeding trio 
of Selene's high grade Nanasis Pinto, which basically is a type of Pinto that has the three stripes on the tail and then a little saddle on top. And that describes it. But these are uh, the super high grade breeding trio. Where's the other one? Oh, the other one's in the Sublosser Tang hiding over here. Doesn't want to pop out, and I can't even really slide the camera in there. There we go. Sorry about the zoom. Beautiful shrimp. Beautiful. See that? Look at it. Even in the tall tail. That's like a perfect black diamond. Some people would say black rose, but we'll see. and here I have Santa's. Zoom out, Santa's from Vin. I got these from Eric Lucas. They were $190 for 10 of them. I'm hoping they get a little bit more color. I don't know. They're on the white sand, so I'm not crazy about the quality of the red on them. There's still a lot of clear. But they are Santa grade. There's 10 of them in there. 10 of these Santa grade guys, but like I said, you could see. I don't know if it's because of the sand, but they're not super, super red. They got some clear to them, but we'll see. And here we have orange eye blue tigers. And everyone's hiding because the light was out before I came down here. And now uh, it's not. And when I turned it on, they all went poof. Goodbye. So we saw the my Bloody Marys from So Shrimp. These are the my good, high quality black diamond, blue diamonds that I keep in here. That's the main, the main good colony. Here are my pumpkins. Some pretty nice pumpkins. I haven't sold any of these besides uh, the low grade calls in my mix. I've been taking the calls out and put them in my mix tank. And then I've been having auctions for my mix neos. Um, but my line's actually getting fairly nice with these oranges. Um, put about maybe almost a year into culling and trying to clean them up. And the color is starting to come out real nice. There's lots of babies in the tank. But, yeah, they're, the line's actually starting to, to clean up a little bit. We're starting to get some nice pumpkins. Nice dark pumpkin shrimp. So, super happy about that. Uh, and here we have the Zebra Babolti. Just picked these up from Flip Aquatics and they are gorgeous, gorgeous Caridina shrimp. However, they are in Neo parameters. And we, I got two buried ones two days after I bought these guys. But these are called Zebra Babolti's. Caridina species. Look at how beautiful. Do you see that? Do you see how beautiful this shrimp is? I want it to turn more on its side. So you can see the beauty of this guy. Gal, actually. She's so beautiful. Yeah, they are. I'm super happy with these. Got 10 of these. I saw a picture on Facebook and I scooped them up and then within a half hour they were already sold out. So in here we have my black rose. My black rose. And then we saw my cherry calls. And then Orange eye red ghosts. Sorry about the shakiness. But again, like I said, these guys are small. 
so they could literally fit inside that Choya. Then they all like to pack in there so you barely see them. <clears throat> Waiting for them to grow. My nice, beautiful cherries. Oh, look at that gorgeous shrimp. See that? Look at that beauty. So, a lot of these are going to be going in the ponds. I'll show you the ponds in a minute. Oh, there's a nice buried female. Beautiful cherry shrimp. Alright, so that pretty much does it. Uh, this tank waiting to get something done. That tank's waiting to get something done. And then, uh, I already showed you all these too, I believe. So, that leaves just the ponds. Which means zoom out. And try to turn on the lights of the pond via the app without uh, exiting the app. So maybe we can do this. Okay, Google. Turn on the Christmas lights. I don't think that works. It doesn't work while I'm on the screen. And it's still named Christmas Lights because I'm using the same, uh, I was too lazy to rename it, by the way, in case you're thinking. But now I need to exit this app. So if I lose you, um, I'll be right back. Did I lose you? Hope I didn't. Okay. But I just flipped these lights on, crawling into my crawl space. Yeah, literally crawling. Let me flip the camera. So literally crawling into my crawl space because I got to go under this pipe here. That I literally, I have to crawl. So, crawling into the crawl space. Flipping. This tank's starting to look grody because I haven't gotten around to put a filter on it yet. So it's just a pond with a bunch of wood and leaves and bleh, a bunch of nastiness growing. But the snails are loving it. But snails are loving that nastiness. So, same in here. Snails are having a good time. They're just keeping the cycle going on these ponds. Until I have enough cherry and pumpkin shrimp to get back into these. That's what's going in these guys. So we're going to have some yellows, some cherries, and some pumpkins. That's what these three ponds are for. Once I have some more baby buried mamas to get in here. A bunch of java moss. Oh, it's just growing, growing like crazy. And just the snails are just in here. This is the pure red line pond people are asking about. I mean, if you could take a close look, I hope you can see. Did you see it? literally everywhere you look? Babies. There's probably a baby for every square in Japan. I, I don't know if you can see now. If there's literally shrimp everywhere. So many, so many. And that's not even on the bottom. The bottom's too hard to see because of the wrinkling water. But I mean, there's just babies everywhere. It's insane, it's insane. But people keep dropping. I'm assuming uh, Corey over at Aquarium Co-op must have just started. So I'm gonna call it quits here too. Go check out that stream. Thank you guys for watching. Um, Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Um, Till next time. Thanks for watching.